KD not himself in the first two of the series. He averaged 12 shots a game, only took three threes. But game three was different. 38 points, 61% shooting, and matches almost assist total from the first two games. Those are the numbers. But Stan, can you tell us exactly, specifically, what has he done to adjust? It's no adjustment. It's just, does he want to score or not? I mean, there's nobody that can keep this guy from getting shots. There's nobody that can limit this guy except himself. And it's been a weird thing with Kevin Durant on why he has. And as we look at a little bit of film, here's game two. He catches at the elbow. If you look at all the space he's got there on a small guy, he can either just turn and shoot it over him, take it into the free throw line and shoot it. But he's looking pass all the way. Puts Clay in sort of a tough spot. He shoots it off the backboard. Now we see here game two, he catches it. Same spot almost. He gets the same amount of space almost. And he, this time he's just going to decide to attack, get to his spot, and shoot the ball. There's nothing anybody can do against this. That's great defense. Hmm. There's nothing they can do. It's the same thing here with chances to attack. He's got the whole side of the floor right here. He chooses to do nothing here and ends up making a pass to a guy who's not even open Oops. on a turnover. He just decides in game two, I'm going to give it up. Now in game three, again, against good defense, he sees space. He just decides he's going to get to his spot and rise up and shoot it. There is no one mm. who can stop Kevin Durant except Kevin Durant. Which is probably frustrating at times for Warriors fans. But as a scorer, why the different versions why the different strategies the adjustment he made was an attitude adjustment it's nothing about his game i mean when you look at kevin durant he takes less than 10 shots when he's one of the most unguardable person players on the planet it's all up to him night in and night out i mean it's not a play call he can ask for it's not say coach get me the ball everything is up to him if he decides he wants to go out there and be aggressive take 20 25 shots over 40, he can do that every single single night. But that's stuff that comes from within. I think not having Boogie was a mental adjustment that he knows he has to be more aggressive. And also, we've seen Doc Rivers and the Clippers actually play a smaller guy on him in the past when they did it with Chris Paul. So he had to just figure out what they were doing. And the coaching staff did a terrific job of getting him in actions where Bogut can be a screener. He could do a couple of catch and shoots. And that helped get his confidence going. This has obviously been a season where everyone's talked a lot more about the Warriors and it hasn't always been positive. So to have a team like the Clippers in the first round, they're feisty. They, they do not take this. They don't see the Warriors as a, an easy loss. How much is that for them as a test as we move forward in this thing? Yeah, I mean, it's been good in that they've had to play. I think that part is good. But this Warriors team, I mean, even game two, giving up a 31-point lead, the fact that they haven't been dominant at home, no NBA champion has ever lost more than two home games by 20 or more during the year. Mm. The Warriors this year, six times. And then they give up the 31-point blowout. There's just some things happening to the Warriors that don't happen to championship teams. That's why I have felt they were vulnerable all year. Uh -oh. And my man Paul Pierce oh, no. jumped oh, in no, that bandwagon no, the other no, day. No, no, no. Yes, he did. No, no, no. They're a little vulnerable only because they don't have Boogie Cousins. But I think they really looked at the next game like, look, we have a sense of urgency now because it's easy to get complacent. If I if I go in the locker room and I'm Katie or I'm Steph, I'm looking like, man, I look over, there's Demarcus. There's Clay. You know, there's, <laughs> there's Steph. You know, I, I can... You know, I can lean back a little bit. I don't have to come out and have a pressure on me, come out here to get 30 every night, so they can get a little complacent. When, when Boogie went down, I think they felt that urgency, and they're like, look, it's time for us to step up. But Boogie we don't have that new. extra, But we don't have that extra luxury of you another know? star out there again. So now they're like, okay, we can go back to being who we really are to where, look, we play with urgency every night. And I think you're going to see that from the Warriors for the rest of the playoffs. You know this, P, as a finals MVP. What they're also seeing is Houston not playing around. Okay, they taking care of business in their series against Utah. And you don't want to play any extra games if you're the Golden State Warriors. So you get up 30 and you lose a game. Now there has to be a sense of urgency to close out this series. They also saw that Harden didn't have to have a great game and they still managed to win last mm. night. It's a little bit scary.